Welcome to the shop. Hope you're having a great day. All right, we got these two kitchen knives to finish up. Are you ready? Here we go. Welcome back. All right, as you can see, I got these all sharpened up and ready and all finished up, but man, the journey is one hell of a ride. So uh, let's just get to it. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. I'll put my website link up in the cards and the first in the description. Let's just get to it. So since this doesn't have any holes in the tang, I gotta bring a clamp to hold it. But uh, also, don't forget my steel wool. Now, I said this on every etching video, but I might as well say it again in case this is the first time here. My etch is 50-50 ferric to water, and then I add vinegar on top of it, like 10% vinegar. So it's actually 45-45-10, but uh, anyway. I think I just like explaining that a whole bunch of times. So what I did is I uh, Windex this down and then I used rubbing alcohol to get it all nice and shiny and clean. So what we're going to do is we're just going to dip it. Dip it a few times, look at it. It's pretty clean, but now we're going to take our steel wool. This is a... Uh, zero 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 steel wool dip it rub in all the oxides make sure everything's nice and even you know we get a nice even etch I can already see the hormone popping you know if you grinded it even it should be good but sometimes there'll be dirt or something you miss with the Windex or the alcohol and you know this just rubs it in better and just gets it nice more even See, we already see that hormone pop, I think. Let's see. Yeah. Boom. See? Popping. <laughs> yeah. Boom. All right. Get the other side. Now we'll take our clamp. Boom. Make sure we're in all the way. Bam, I leave it in for uh, probably two or three minutes, nothing special. Maybe I'll pull it up and dip it a few more times, but you know, check to see the darkness. The vinegar really makes it dark. Now I'll go and neutralize it and uh, meet you back at the buffing wheel. So this is my Instagram feed. I didn't feel comfortable putting the camera on the buffer because these knives are sharp and I didn't want something to go wrong and cut my hand off or something. I had to do an overdub because if you watch me on Instagram, you know I always play music in the background. You can see I already soaked these in penetrating oil, then I let them sit overnight, and then boom, we'll get the glue in them up. Back to the footage. So let's get this epoxy all ready. I got, uh, I got my big clamp set up and ready to go. Um, I'm gonna put it in the vise for one of them and I'll figure somewhere else out for that. Maybe I'll have to put the vise in the other room for the other one. I got a new mat down here after four years. I already got dicom on it in one spot, clay on it in another spot. <laughs> Can't keep anything nice, can I? <laughs> I guess you either keep it nice and don't do anything or you do as much as possible and uh, just hope it stays as clean as you can. <laughs> I'm the latter. <laughs> it's great having nice things, but uh, if you never use them, what's the point? 
I was almost thinking about getting one of those like big feeding syringes or something for like turkey and stuff to squeeze it down in here, but I think we'll just do it with a popsicle stick. Now the last ones of these, which Amazon links, I got these down below. I, I took the caps off and I was pouring it out of the caps, but when you put it back in, it gets all in here. So I think it's just easier to pull these out take like a popsicle stick or something to pull it out like that I mean for me you know everyone's got their own way of doing things then you just put that back in take your rubbing alcohol and clean off the top boom look at me being clean and responsible <laughs> it's a rare sight it's almost like Bigfoot's in the house <laughs> man I swear this stuff smells like fish eggs if anyone, you know, the fisherman, I, I haven't fished in 30 years, but I remember when I was a little kid getting those little fish egg lure things, man. This is exactly what that smells like. Look at that, nice and clean, <laughs> well kept. <laughs> oh, that's what I wanted to do. It's all right, that's slow, uh, slow drying epoxy, so we got time. I just don't want it running down the sides. I'm going to clean this top part off, so I'm not really worried about the top. I just don't want it running over the edges and sticking because that'll be more stuff to sand off. So as long as we get it covered here, we clean this off every 20, 30 minutes or something, check on it and clean it off. We should be good. That way. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I'm probably out of all cameras, huh? <laughs> Man, this little vice right here, I'm gonna have to put, look there on Amazon, put this down on my links too. This little thing is, man, worth its weight in gold. <laughs> I think I found the spot to put it. Got a vice grip, and uh, here's the drill press. So it's in the drill press slot, and then boom. <laughs> All right, let's get to the second one. Number two. <laughs> Oops, it's cutting in. <laughs> now in about 20 minutes, I'm going to take this tape off because, uh, yeah, I want to make sure it's not sticking. Let's make it easy on ourselves. <laughs> ah, maybe we'll take it off now just to make sure. Let's take it off the other one too. I feel like i gotta got to put a clamp on these so it doesn't slide out. At least this way. Now we gotta clean the blades off, make sure they ain't got no, uh... let me get a clean rag. Have to do that to the other one too. I know I should tape them up and wrap them and stuff, but I always forget. I'll be back tomorrow, I guess, to unveil them. <laughs> Boom. All nice, clean, nice and straight, if the camera doesn't distort it. So what we gotta do now, I save some pieces. I'm gonna go to the grinder and get some sawdust and drop the piece. And we'll just make a pile of sawdust and then mix up some epoxy for here. I did get kicked in the nuts a little bit. Look at the tip. Hopefully we can see it. Yeah, when I pulled this out of the clamp, 
the tip stayed in the clamp. So it's just a little piece. Now I'll put the playlist of uh, how I straightened this up. I think it was in the last video. So I'm just gonna have to do that and then I'll just take a little bit of ferric and hit the spine. But it's not gonna be too much shaving. It's just a little bit. So man, 95% done and woo. <laughs> But all this is clean. There's no clean up here or any of that, so we're good. All right, let me get some uh, sandpaper, and then I'll come back when I show this. <laughs> Not sandpaper. Let me get some sawdust. <laughs> Can't speak. Woo! All right. Tragedy averted. We got the tip all nice and cleaned up. You know, I put penetrating oil, and I even did the spine with uh, ferric. I just took it. Took a paper towel and wiped the ferric on it and then uh, hit it on the buffer again. That's it. No more etching and all that stuff. Just the spine. So, boom. This one's back on track and just needs sharpened up. So, let's give this one epoxy. All I did, I was, man, it was just taking too long to set up the cameras. I just took the grinder. I hit this on the bottom wheel and then held this like I was catching milk from a cow. <laughs> it's filled with sawdust, so let's get on it. Been doing a lot of epoxy work here lately, good lord. Probably done more epoxy work in the last two months than I have my whole four years snake making. <laughs> Doesn't mean I like it. <laughs> Just a little bit, we don't need much. And see, they're all nice and clean from yesterday, so I'm definitely gonna keep doing that. Mix all this up. It looks like those uh, sugar things you get. Yum yum. <laughs> you know, they're covered with uh, caramel and then they dip them in sugar or whatever. <laughs> all right. Let's make sure we get this hole filled. All right, there we go. I'm going to try to keep all the other stuff clean, but uh, let's see how this goes. I mean, we've got a lot of other black spots, so... <laughs> all right, I'm going to let this dry, and then we'll see. I got a 320 on here. I was going to start with the A65, but I'm thinking of uh, aluminum oxide would help just a little bit more. If not, we'll get back down to a 120 just to get this epoxy off. Clean it up, and then we'll go up to 8.30, and uh, I'm going to tape this off because I don't want to drop it and get cut or something. Hold on. Now I can hold it and not worry about getting cut and all that good stuff. Let's do it. Looks like we're gonna have to hand sand it. I just can't get to that, you know, without messing up the back of this blade, so. The dreaded hand sand it. <laughs> back to the bench. Probably won't be much talking. I wasn't gonna do time lapse, but I'm just gonna start with 100 and go up from there. I already hit it a little bit. It looks worse than it did with the hole hit it. All right, here we go. I just slid across that and it bit me. Damn love bite. <laughs> All right, we're up to 400.
I know this is stabilized, but this coca bola isn't. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a uh, little bit of Danish oil on it just to seal it in, make sure we're all good. Man, that spot's not coming out. Well, I just did a big goof. I was sitting there trying to pick it out and knock this whole thing out. I might make a little sliver. I might actually cut this out, make a sliver, and I don't know. <laughs> Man. 99% done. All I need to do is sharpen it, and that happens. That's why I hate using wood. Mm -mm -mm. Man, it's already messed up, so uh, I'm gonna cut off the cut out this epoxy, cut a little sliver of this, and epoxy that in, and see how that looks. Hopefully, we can make it half decent. Here we go. <laughs> I made it fit so good I can't get it out. <laughs> oh man. Alright, let's get this mixed up. I got plenty of that. The whole first part of this video was mixing this up, so I'm just gonna show putting it in. Alright, I'm gonna try to make it so it's not messy on the outside just down on the inside. <laughs> I'm gonna put a clamp on this side and uh, see if I can squeeze this down in that side too. Because it's popping out one side and the other. That's got to be better than what it was. <laughs> so here we are the next day. What I ended up doing is putting two clamps with paper towels under them to clamp both sides of it. That's why this is here. That way I wouldn't have to worry about the clamp sticking. I'll put a picture up from Instagram. I can't have any background because I always listen to music on Instagram. But anyway, I'm just going to hit it on this same 320, try to get it smoothed down, and then uh, we'll see where we are from there. All right, let's do it. The rest is just hand sanding. Hopefully we can make that match. <laughs> you guys probably watch Outdoor 55. So a couple videos ago, he was talking about these diamond stones. So I decided to try them out. I got a fine one and uh, a coarse one. Now this blade has some chips in it. Oh, here, let me show you. So when I was on the grinder, I actually blew through. So up here, was just uh, parts that were messed up, but then I took it down so much, I actually did blow through. So this is a uh, CA glue, super glue, and a bunch of shavings. I figured since this is a prototype, I might as well figure out what works and what doesn't. The patch, if I found something that actually matched, or like turned it to the side or something, this would probably be better than this, because that CA glue and sawdust just didn't work good at all but uh yeah 
But anyway, you probably won't be able to see it, but there's like a little chip right here and a chip right here. Oh yeah, we can see it. Okay. Yeah, so I guess that's from throwing the knife around and not caring about it. Because the other one is good, but... So I'm going to use the core stone. I'm used to belts. You know what? Those are pretty big chips. I'll be back. I'm going to uh, just hit the edge a little bit. Then we'll come back and sharpen it. Got all the chips out. And I just put a little edge. I went up to an A45. See, we still got our mirror there. So let's put it on the fine stones and see how sharp we can get. I mean, it's... Woo! <laughs> I don't know what you're supposed to use on these diamonds. I'm gonna use a little bit of oil just to... A little bit of sharpening and we'll do the paper test. <laughs> if you're gonna do the cut test, you gotta do thin paper. And you gotta listen, you know. I mean, to me, the point of cutting paper isn't to show how sharp your knife is, it's to see if there's any burrs. You know, you want to listen and see if it gets hung up, like right there. That stopped. There might be a burr there, it might be the way the paper twisted. Alright, let's get the other one, see how that looks. And it's already got a hell of an edge. <laughs> let's see. I haven't done any sharpening on it. <laughs> Maybe we only have to strop this one. <laughs> like I've said this, you know, I don't know if I said this earlier, but I do everything off the belts. But it's good to have stones or whatever, just in case. Yeah, that hasn't been stropped or anything, so. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna hit it. Yep. All right, so that's about it. Oof, what a ride, what a ride. But these knives are finally done and time to move on to something else. I gotta be careful, I keep forgetting they're sharp. I mean, real sharp. <laughs> Thanks for coming along and uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff. My website link is up in the cards and down in the description. I got Amazon links down there too. I got knives, I got shirts, I got all that stuff up on my website. So hope you all having a great day. And as always, take it easy.